Hey guys. So today's video is going to be part two of a red flags in love series that is a very short series. It's going to be two videos. I can make a bigger series if you want me to. I have never really done a video in the high maintenance realm of things talking about pop culture topics before. And I think I need to start doing it more often because otherwise I got to talk about my own self <laughs> and my own life lessons. And some of them I'm just not ready to talk about on the internet. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I'll bring up some stuff. I'm trying to keep it private. I'm trying. There's tons of teachable lessons out here. And I did one earlier just now. In fact, it was a chit chat, get ready with me, this makeup look, all the products are in that video. But in part one of this, we talked about red flags in men. And we used our good Judy, Risa Tisa, as a teachable moment. And um, it's a lot. Risa Tisa's story was a lot. I, I don't want you guys to think the point of my video is to like flame out anybody I'm talking about. It's just an example. I, I only know what I've seen, particularly today, because we are talking about a reality show contestant. I can literally go off of what I've seen. I'm not trying to make sweeping declarations about the entirety of this human being's character. Like let's use our brain cells. That's not the point of this. It's not a hit piece. We're just going to look at what we can observe with our eyeballs and see what we can learn from it. And with that being said today, we're going to talk about love is blind season six and Chelsea. I can do another video. I might film one when I turn this off on for Patreon. I need to get it going again and change some things around. And this feels like the type of stuff I would love to do on Patreon is just talk about reality TV and stuff like that, which I don't watch a lot of. I'm starting to think maybe I should. There's a lot to learn from people in these shows. Anyway, Love is Blind, season six, Chelsea. <sighs> You're gonna have to unfortunately come down to the front of the class, we have to talk. We're gonna talk today about red flags in women. And I don't necessarily mean this video to be for men, like red flags they should look out for, although definitely do be looking out for some of these. It's more red flags I want us to identify within ourselves, maybe our friends and family we're sick of. This is such a type of woman who gets into such a type of relationship. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I haven't been a Chelsea in my life. Reunion's not live at the time of recording this, but the wedding episode is. So we know how this works out between Chelsea and Jimmy. Spoiler alert, if you don't wanna know that yet, I don't know, maybe don't watch this video. I'm glad I waited until the wedding episode because it ended about the way I thought it would. So let's get started. Very quick recap because it's important to talk about context here. Chelsea and Jimmy meet in the pods. At the time, Chelsea is talking to Trevor. She has a good connection with both guys. So I know y'all are gonna be like, what? If you've never watched the show, it's important for context. Meanwhile, Jimmy has a connection with Chelsea and Jessica. It is also important to know that Jessica is a 10 out of 10. She's one of the most good looking women I've ever seen in my life. Gorgeous, stunning, beautiful. Jessica is a mom. She has a 10 year old. She does wait for some reason to tell Jimmy this. And on the one hand, I understand waiting, but on the other hand, I don't. So I don't really know if I would have played it any different. But once the kid thing comes up, Jimmy kind of seems to be not so much about that life. So Jessica is not playing it cool at all. She, she's letting Jimmy know, this is what I want. This is my standard. These are my expectations. I'm not sitting around and waiting for you to make up your mind about me. This is not the type of person I am. I'm not gonna hold your hand through any of this. And I like that. I like that from her. And then you have Chelsea, who is playing the cool girl. And we're gonna talk about all this. That's why I'm bringing it up. I wanna make sure we're setting the scene. Chelsea is making it seem like, hey baby, I'm breezy, easy breezy. You like it, I love it. She is the exact opposite of that when it all comes down to it. But Trevor and Jimmy are both Phil and Chelsea, and then both of them have made it clear their intentions with her. They're gonna propose. Jessica kind of gets thrown to the wayside. They're gonna propose to Chelsea. Jimmy gets to Chelsea first, so Chelsea says yes. And then they go on into the rest of the show, which is they go to like Bermuda or some shit, then they live together, then they have to go to the altar. Now, let's talk really quickly about some of the things between Jimmy and Chelsea that are apparent immediately. Chelsea, in the course of their interaction in the pods where they cannot see each other, tells Jimmy she looks like Megan Fox. And this poor girl has gotten rug through the internet mud for saying this. And I just wanna say, I don't really think Chelsea looks like Megan Fox, but she kinda does. And here's what I will say. There's a point in the show, it's the episode, the day after Chelsea and Jimmy's big fight. And Jimmy's on the couch and Chelsea's sitting on the chair and from an angle, the camera hits her at a certain angle where I'm like, okay, I see it. It's there. Is it enough to mention to a man who is only gonna have that to go off of in a show 
that is entirely designed to remove the physicality from it and only focus on what's on the inside. Like bringing that up on Chelsea's part was a calculated move. It's important to know all this stuff because we're about to get into the red flags that Chelsea goes on to display. And in my opinion, all of the groundwork for these red flags to show up were present in the beginning of their relationship. Everything from Jessica being as fine as she is to Chelsea telling this fool she like Megan Fox to her pretending she's easy breezy cover girl, like all of it was clearly going to be an issue. So let's start one by one talking about Chelsea's big red flags and hopefully we can figure out if any of us have them. So let's talk about the first red flag that Chelsea, the main red flag that was very clear in Chelsea. Chelsea is incredibly insecure and very obviously so. Where that comes from is hard to say because we don't know a whole lot about her history, although we can infer a few things, which we'll talk about later. If you have insecurities to this degree, you have no business dating and you certainly have no business trying to get married. The problem is some women think that their insecurities are going to be solved by a relationship and that's the exact opposite of it. You become a nightmare to deal with when you are insecure. Chelsea's insecurity was clearly about her looks. I don't think she's unattractive. I think I think that there's some raw material there. There's some styling choices and hair choices we could make differently, but at the end of the day, you know, she's not unattractive, but I think once she understood that Jess was her competition in this moment, I think it messed with her. I, I think I think she already had the insecurity and Jess was just the push over the cliff she needed to fully dive into this because she mentions it several times in the show. In fact, there's a point where her and Jimmy get into a big argument and she's projecting so heavily onto Jimmy at one point. They're having an argument and she says, ever since you saw that picture of Jess, you've just been looking for problems in our relationship. And it's like, no girl, that's what you're doing. I guess he didn't know what Jess looked like for a long time and then he did. And that day, Chelsea was very aware of it. She was telling her friends it happened. She was obviously fixating on it and then projecting that onto Jimmy. And that's what insecurity in relationships do. It causes you to put all your stuff on other people and you're wanting them to fix this within you. Now, to a degree, we're all going to have things we don't like about ourselves. We want to work on, but if you're constantly in a state of self-improvement and you're staying in that vibration, I think it's a lot harder for your insecurities to run the show as much as they do when you're not being proactive or conversely, if you're playing the victim as it pertains to your insecurities, which Chelsea also does a lot. Oh my gosh, she does it so much in this show. It's so unattractive, have some dignity, but this whole thing, don't like, you know what? I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me, get to, let me get to that point. We'll talk about that when we get there. Let's talk about the second red flag. The second red flag is competing with women you feel inferior to. I'm not trying to say that absolutely Chelsea felt inferior to Jess. I don't think there was even a, a dislike towards them. Everything that I've heard since has led me to believe they're good friends. I'm not saying there is this front loaded, obvious mean girls competition, but I will say this. There are a lot of women, a lot, who will get in relationships and stay in relationships with men simply because they are in competition with another woman. I'm trying to tell you what, that's why men are allowed to have harems and rosters the way they are because those women will view the man in question as more of a prize. The more women he has, because that's that ego. Women, this is part, the main point of this video is the ego of women and how it screws us up every time. Girls just will absolutely stay dealing with dudes who have rosters for this reason. They're full blown in competition with each other. It's not really about the dude anymore. They just need to win because their ego has them convinced that it makes them like the fairest of them all. There are women who maybe at one point were in a love triangle with a man, got the man at the end of the day, but no matter how bad that man treats her, how much she's like struggling with him, doesn't like him, don't wanna be around him, can't let him go because he might go back to the other girl. Like it's a thing. There's even women who will be with a man and because the ex is so that bitch, it makes them feel like, oh, well I must be on the same caliber as her if I'm with her ex and they get caught up in that. Like women are competing with each other. We don't compete with each other the way men do, but we do. And I wish everybody would stop this kumbaya sisterhood shit. We don't have to fight it out in the streets <laughs> if we feel that competitive energy with another woman. But I think we need to at least be self-aware enough to know when that competitive energy is driving us 
to stay in a situation because I swear I feel like a big part of why Jess was driving Chelsea so crazy in this situation is because she was trying to compete with Jess. She was trying to compete with, compete with AD at one point. There was a point on the beach where Jimmy was talking to AD. Like she's so insecure physically and feels so competitive with women about the physicality instead of figuring out what she needs to work on with herself, not just externally, don't get me wrong, like Chelsea could go and get the Kylie Jenner special and completely retool herself from head to toe. And if her spirit is not right, if she has not healed her wounds, it won't make a difference. She can't keep expecting the world to mirror back something to her that she doesn't even see in herself. In other words, Jimmy's not gonna treat you like you're Megan Fox because you don't even have Megan Fox energy. You're so insecure and so unsure of yourself and so jealous and insecure of other women that it's, again, with the dignity. Let's have some dignity here. I'll tell you what, if my man was flirting with another girl or made it known he thought another girl was attractive, the last thing I would do was let him think it bothered me. I wouldn't care if I was seeing red, it made me so angry. I just wouldn't let him know. A, I think some men enjoy that. It's kind of like a form of triangulation. But men, if you act crazy over a dude, and you act like other women are inferior to you, he's gonna start to be like, well, are they inferior to you? Like, I don't see anything wrong with you, but what am I not seeing? Like getting a little monocle out, getting closer. Don't do it. Number three, the playing the victim shit. Oh my God, y'all. I'm gonna lump playing the victim in with a, with a kind of a sub point. <sighs> Cause the victim thing is not cute. I don't care if you're man, woman, trans, a they be, I don't care. It's not attractive on anyone. It's completely appalling. And it typically is emblematic of you being like kind of a bully. You're kind of an asshole if you're a victim. It just, why wouldn't you be? If you're a victim, nothing's your fault and everyone's out to get you. So no matter how poorly you, be, you behave, you're just defending yourself. So it's fine. Like a really good example, okay? Jimmy at some point has told Chelsea that he slept with one of his really good girlfriends. He told her this off camera. And I think he, I think he could have been trying to get her mad. We, it's hard to tell. But let's just say for the sake of argument, he was just telling her because he wanted to be honest, which y'all got to learn when to stop being honest with people. If it happened before you, before Chelsea, I don't know why she needs to know. Maybe he was afraid she'd find out another way, but it was before, I don't know. It obviously didn't help the situation. But anyway, he wanted that to stay off camera. He wanted to protect the reputation of his friend because his friend was going to come on camera and meet Chelsea and Chelsea threw that back in his face a lot and that was one of the big turning points for him with her he was like no I don't want to be with you but when he would tell her that like towards the end even when the marriage thing comes down to pass or, or doesn't in their case he tells her you know I was kind of I was in this until that point because I trusted you not to tell anyone this I asked you not to do anything and then Chelsea immediately flips it around and it's like but it made me sad it hurt my feelings that's the victim shit Jimmy is telling you he's communicating to you as his partner his life partner this is like the foundation of a good relationship at the end of the day it's trust it's your partner is is your counsel that is your confidant that is the person that you should be that's it's just the most intimacy you have in this world is with your, your husband. And here he is sharing that side of himself with you and not even to protect himself, to protect his friend, which I would, in my opinion, would be like, you know what, I love this situation, but I, I respect and appreciate that you're trying to shield your friend and protect, there's that word, men should be protecting. You're trying to protect your friend from embarrassment or whatever the case may be. But she can't hear that. She's not hearing Jimmy say, this was a big deal breaker for me. She's immediately turning it into poor me, poor me. All she cares about is her feelings in this moment. She doesn't even give a shit what Jimmy thinks about this or how it's affected him negatively. So that's the, the victim thing she does a lot. And every time she acts badly or every time she doesn't like something she just turned puts on this like whiny baby like it made me sad like look i'm not saying you shouldn't be able to communicate to your partner when they hurt you you absolutely should be able to but there is a way to do it that is not manipulative that's what this is this is manipulation i, I don't care what anyone says it's even down to the posture she took on the the baby voice it made me sad and i was uncomfy like mm -mm, nope red flag now the the men thing this is another kind of this is part and parcel to the victim mentality but i think it's a different thing entirely that i wish women would stop and i see this on reels tiktok those like toxic dating compilation i've seen this okay i probably need to start gathering more of these up to show you examples of what i mean 
I see all the time women who are heterosexual and who want relationships with men. And in some cases, people I know in real life who are about the most boy crazy people I know. It'd be these type of women that do this the most, frankly. It's the ones who are posting like men ain't shit, memes, reels, every guy is trash, every guy has cheated on me, every guy is a uh, garbage. And if you really believe all men are trash, then you're gonna keep accepting trash because you don't, there's no contrast. You don't know what else to look for. Not to mention you are the common denominator in your issues with men. Sorry, they're not all trash, period. I know that's like super unpopular, but they're not. But let's say you don't wanna buy anything I just said for a dollar. Let's say you're like, no girl, you don't understand. They are all trash. You don't know me, fine. Let's say that's true. It's not, but let's say it is. What you're also doing, believe it or not, is advertising to the world that you're an easy mark. You are an easy lick. And I don't know why you would do that, frankly. In Chelsea's case, there's a couple of times, there's a point in the pod still where she's like crying. And she's like, I'm used to boys being so mean to me. And there's another point where she's meeting Jimmy's friends and she's like, every guy I've ever been with has cheated on me. Like, why are you advertising this? I get the point, I think, is to try to explain why she is so insecure. Again, something she needs to deal with on her own. But what's really happening is it's making you look like an easy mark. In fact, I know someone who, in the context of her very serious relationship, went through a period of time where she was posting like these, it was like a meme or like those little quote captiony things people post. And they were always basically saying stuff like, I wish you appreciated me. I don't know, the context is basically like, I'm in this shitty relationship. This person doesn't appreciate me. This person doesn't love me. I am being treated like crap. And I know what the, the point of posting it was. Clearly this person thought like, I'm gonna post this and some man is gonna see this and be like, I'll treat you better, here I come. Like, I don't know why else you would do it. Cause like she lived with her partner, she could just talk to them about the issues. She wanted attention for this, obviously. But I truly believe women who do this all the time are basically like trying to send out a challenge. Like come prove me wrong. And that's not what they think when they see that. The real shitty guys out there are gonna see that and be like, oh, this is my type of girl. This is the type of girl who gets treated bad. She expects to get treated bad. Like if a guy thought you were not the one and it wasn't gonna start today, they wouldn't even try that shit with you. So stop advertising that it's normal for you to be treated badly. It's like the broken window theory. Have y'all ever heard that? There's like this theory that if there's a dilapidated building somewhere, the minute one rock is broken through one of those windows, the building will be des destroyed shortly thereafter. If there's been no clear damage to it, there will continue to be no clear damage to it. But the minute there is perceived damage, it's just gonna keep piling on. It's gonna get worse and worse. It's gonna keep getting rocks thrown up, graffiti, you name it. I'm telling you, that's what y'all doing that shit looks like and sounds like. It's not, again, dignity, God. Number four, making demands you don't even live up to. I went through a period of time where I did this. It's not cute. It's not cute at all. A good example with Chelsea is there is a time like during their big fight that ended up, you know, kind of turning him off to her overall. She was losing her mind that he had gone out to the bar for an hour and a half. You know, he invited her. She didn't want to go. He was gone for an hour and a half. This fool works from home that she lives. So they're never away from each other. So she's losing it talking. To, and, and I think at one point she's talking specifically about how she doesn't want to be with someone who's out drunk partying all the time. Meanwhile, uh, Chelsea per her own admission is dirty martini drunk. Slop kebabbing, which we'll talk about in a minute. There comes a time in this thing with Jimmy where it seems to be all about what Chelsea wants. She doesn't seem to care at all about Jimmy and what he needs to feel seen or wanted in this relationship, which I think comes down to the fact that we have conditioned women to believe that whatever we want is completely normal and rational and anything a man wants or says is controlling and abusive. I'm, I'm here to tell you, I know it's an unpopular opinion. I also know there's nuance to this, but just the type of memes I see all the time that women will post about like, uh, the one that always sticks out in my head. There was this one I saw one time and it said him, Hey babe, I gotta go, my phone died. Me, you're gonna be next if you don't charge it. Like if that went the other way and a man posted that, it would be, what Arisa used to say, the United Nations are red flags. We gotta stop excusing this behavior in ourselves, but not in other men. It's a red flag, period. It really is going to make your relationships with men difficult if you have been taught and you believe that because you're a woman, you were always right. And that's just where we are right now. I promise you that's why a lot of you guys are having problems with your relationships. You genuinely believe and your girlfriends are gassing you up and so is social media that everything they want is unreasonable and you're a queen, goddess, 
slay the boots, house down, whatever. And anything you say or want is your destiny. You're just, you deserve it. Obviously, again, there is a time and place for having preferences and things you don't want. Like I'm with Chelsea. I don't want to be with someone who's in the bar all the time. I just don't. I'm not there. It, it, I feel like alcohol and clubbing, like even with your man at the bar, it can turn into a fight. It just, it doesn't bring out the best in people. So I'm not saying she's inherently wrong completely for having this standard, but in the context of the conversation they were having, I don't think Jimmy did anything wrong. And there was even still a way to communicate this to him in a way that A, he would be more receptive to it, and B, didn't make you come off looking like a fool because what actually ended up happening is Chelsea started flat out lying and saying, well, this person told me you were with Jess and this person, like she was lying to him. She kept calling him a liar and saying that he told her in the pods that he never goes out. And he corrected her many times and was like, no, I didn't say that. I said, I like to go out early and come home at a decent time. And even still, even people who don't like to go out once in a blue moon will go out for their friend's birthday. And in this case, just for an hour and a half. But anyway, she's calling him a liar the whole time. Meanwhile, she's lying to him and saying, I heard you're with Jess. I heard you're with Mackenzie. So like, again, she's setting this standard and making this demand of him that she herself is in no shape, way or form willing to adhere to. And it turns into a constant game of like, please me, make me happy. Girl, I'm trying to tell y'all, kill your relationship a hundred times out of a hundred. Let's go ahead and talk about the sloppy drunk thing. That's another red flag. I was a bartender for many years. I went through a period of time where I drank a lot. And I've also had friends who have gone through periods of time where they drink a lot and friends who still do drink a lot. And I cannot tell you how many times I have seen relationship ruining fights happen because everyone involved is sloppy drunk. If I was Chelsea, both times Jimmy, like, so the first time being with AD, when that made her mad, he was talking to her and it pissed her off. I wouldn't have said anything. I would have waited till the next day when everybody was sober as a tree. It, he can actually hear you. Drunk people are not talking to each other. They're just screaming pointless, stuff no one's gonna remember why they said it or, or what they meant when they said like why have an argument with a drunk person I'll never understand it and then the second time when she's martini drunk or whatever which seems like every time they fought it was because she was drunk kind of my point there's just girls like this where once they get a liquid courage they want to tell everybody something about themselves and you can really see kind of the ugly sides of them because that filter that kind of inhibition is gone and what she should have done every single time if something really bothered her she could have waited till the next day to address it. Again, clear heads prevail, strategic retreat, retreat. Talk about it when you're sober. But no, she would get sloppy drunk and just belligerent and super unattractive in the middle of it. Sound, that crying whiny thing she did. Like I've seen it, it's not just Chelsea. I'm not trying to pick on Chelsea. I've seen this, I've done this for sure. I don't think it's good for relationships. I've seen a lot of people even who have started their relationship because they like to drink and party together. And then when one of them decides they don't wanna do it anymore, the relationship completely falls apart because that's what it was built on. It's just not something I think is helpful to relationships. I don't think it's helpful to anyone, period, like in your life. I don't think it's a wise thing to invest a lot of your time and energy in, but especially when you're trying to date someone, let them see this slob kebab side of you enough and that alone is gonna be enough to turn them off. Because again, your inhibitions are down. You're not filtering anything you're saying. You're not thinking about anything. You're just looking like a, a whiny, crying, screaming, screeching, jealous mess. Again, dignity. Pretending you're chill when you're not. I'm not saying be a, again, demanding, yelling, difficult woman. I'm not saying that's the answer, but if you are, <laughs> And I don't know how Chelsea doesn't know that she is. Don't pretend that you're not. This is something I've seen. I've talked about this. I did this before where like I would get into these relationships with men where I guess you would call it now they call it situationships, but it was not presented to me that way because I would never have signed up for that. But I would end up with guys who would tell me like, I love you. Like I want to be with, but not right now, that whole thing. And I would just be like, oh yeah, totally. Like I'm fine. I'm totally breezy. It's cool. It was not cool. It was not fine. I was not breezy, but I feel like I had to pretend that I was because I guess I thought, let me convince them that I'm not really into this and then they'll be into this even though I'm sleeping with them. It's so stupid. We do that because it works on us. When a man will sit there and tell us that like they're not really into us, you know, or, or, or they're not giving us all of them, but they're giving us some of them, it works on us. It makes us want more. It makes us want to be like, how much further can we take this? Can I get him to commit? We're projecting. We think it works on them. It doesn't. If you're sleeping with them, they want a commitment with from you, they would have given it to you. <laughs> Period. I'm sorry. 
No, I'm not. But Chelsea in the pods with both Trevor and, and even like after the fact, she meets Trevor at like the lake house later on. And Trevor at one point looks her in the face and says, yeah, I just can't picture you yelling at me. You just don't seem like that type of person. And Chelsea's like, oh yeah, totally. I'm not that type of person. And then even when they go meet um, Jimmy's parents, they, Jimmy makes a comment about like, well, we've had our fights. And Chelsea's like, I don't think they were fights. Like she's completely in denial about how volatile of a partner she is. And I think it's because she justifies her actions because she feels like a victim. If you feel like a victim, you can't possibly be the bad guy. You cannot be both. And I, I don't know if it's that she doesn't connect the two or if she has never seen anything different and doesn't know that what she's doing is unhealthy. I don't know. I don't know. But I hope she's getting therapy because she desperately needs it. That is something I see women do a lot too. Not always like in serious relationships because let's be honest, once once a woman gets you like she will let you know <laughs> if she's unhappy about something it's typically in the dating stage but it's not going to get you very far a like i would want my partner to know not necessarily that like i'm a pain in the ass but like i don't want a casual relationship and if that's what you want leave me alone instead of trying to pretend that i'm so cool and so chill because that's like i'm just breezy and like easy to get along with like no just tell them if they're not going to give it to you they'll dip and at least you don't have to worry about it anymore the guys will think you're crazy <laughs> if you say one thing and you do something completely different. We feel the same way when they do shit like that. So it's like just that self-awareness and being inauthentic, which, which you tend to think is protecting you, but it doesn't because your true colors eventually show. And then the guy is going to be like, what? Why are you being this way? And then because internally you've been like seething and having all these like fights with yourself and monologues in your head, you just assume he knows exactly why you're so freaking mad. And then you're blowing up on him and he has no clue where it's coming from. Like, just tell people who you are and what you want out the gate. Don't pretend. It, there's no point to it. There's nothing to gain from that. It's, the jig will be up eventually. I don't, I don't understand. I talked about this in the loser video, which I'll leave below if you haven't seen it, but I'm gonna say it again. Final red flag in yourself that you need to be aware of is too many friends, particularly women, around you who are only telling you what you wanna hear all the time. I am, I saw this thing the other day. I could never figure out how to like articulate this the best and now I can. It was like this video on TikTok or Instagram and this girl was like, doesn't it make you sick to know that the worst person you've ever met in your whole life is sitting in therapy right now being told what a wonderful person they are and how great they are just the way that they are and how deserving of everything they want they are. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I've been trying to say. Everyone can't be <laughs> fine the way they are. Everyone can't be perfect the way they are. Everyone can't be the prize and the best thing walking. It's just not possible. And when you are only surrounding yourself with messages that tell you that, your friends, the algorithm, whatever, like good luck. We all got shit to work on big time in Chelsea's case, bless her heart. It, it goes like this. Your friends are telling you all the time every time your relationships don't work out. Oh my God, he's not enough for you. He's garbage. And like in the case of the Jimmy Chelsea thing in particular, this is a great example. And I'm not trying to met, like quantify these two people's attractiveness. I'm not trying to say Jimmy is better looking than Chelsea or anything like that. I'm just saying, let's look at two people who matched, who say they love each other, who plan to get married. Everyone has come into Chelsea's defense and being like, Chelsea deserves so much better. She's beautiful. She's just as pretty as Megan Fox all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, they're like, Jimmy's a thumb. He is not cute at all. It's this such a weird energy we have for men versus women, where it's like women are fine the way they are 100% of the time and men by virtue of existing are shit. Look, I, I used to be this way, okay? I can tell you it's part of why your relationships are not working. I promise you, I promise you. How can you possibly have a loving, good relationship with something you low-key despise? It doesn't make any sense. You would feel the same way if men said the same thing. If men was like, oh yeah, women are trash. You'd be like, oh God, any woman who gets with him is in for it because he doesn't even like women to begin with. What is the difference? I don't get it. But anyway, I have a feeling Chelsea has been gassed up her whole life by her friends into thinking, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, into thinking that it's always everyone else's fault and that she's better than anyone she's ever been with. They'll never do better than her. She's the hottest thing walk in. She's the best, smartest, brightest, most, I know. I know that's what happened. If that's not what happened, then Chelsea's putting on a real good show for everyone around her. Cause I don't know how people in her real life could have never seen this behavior from her before. Especially if, if they ever became the target of this vitriol she has. 
You guys need to stop only wanting to surround yourself with people like this, only wanting the algorithm to show you stuff like this. I don't think there's anything wrong. There doesn't need to be this big scary thing around the fact that girl, you probably are the problem. And if you display any of these red flags, you are certainly a problem. I can promise you that. But we have to get out of this battle of the sexes thing. This whole thing where it's like, again, because a man says it or wants it, it's bad. But our poor behavior is fine because we're girls and it's cute. I don't think it's cute at all. <laughs> and again, coming as someone who used to be this way, it made every relationship I had impossible. And sometimes the guys in question were the problem. They really were. But sometimes, dude, it was me. And no matter what this poor guy did, it wouldn't have mattered. Because <laughs> I was hell on heels. It wouldn't have mattered. Don't be having yes men around you. You know, if your relationships are consistently flaming out, not going the way you want them to, and like Chelsea, you're constantly crying about boys are always mean to me. It's you, girl. And everyone around you who's not making sure that you know that is not really your friend. They do not care about you, period. I will tell you something that will hurt your feelings before I'll let somebody else tell you. In other words, I would rather, with love, as someone who I hope you trust, put it to you in a way that you can hear it then I would rather a stranger who doesn't care about your feelings at all the way they would present it to you. And right now with the internet and the world at large consuming Chelsea's behavior on Netflix right now, I'm sure that's exactly what's happening. I'm sure, like I said, none of this is new behavior for her. I just think a lot of other people, again, either she is like just that good at putting on a show and no one's ever seen the side of her, but I would be willing to bet lots of people have and nobody said anything or they found a way to make her the victim or they found a way to justify it or they found a way to try to make her feel better about herself instead of telling her what she needed to hear. So now she's getting it from a lot of people who really don't give a shit about her feelings. So I don't know, man, that's a big, 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 big red flag for me because Ch Chelsea just is the exact kind of woman who will keep doing this and continue to think that it's men. Sometimes it is. There are trash, hello, hello, I just covered Risa Tisa. <laughs> like, I know there's trash men out here, but it's a lot of trash women too. And we just do not, for some reason, it's like, it's like we decided collectively at some point that women are perfect. Even though some of us will be beefing so hard with women ourselves. <laughs> Every woman's got a bitch she cannot stand. But we'll also be like, all women are perfect. Like, which is it? Which is it? <laughs> But that's my um, hopefully helpful. Again, if you have not seen the show, this probably was really hard to follow. It's a good season to watch just to observe Chelsea. There's a lot of people in Love, and Bl Love is Blind and Seasons Past that are good examples of red flags, like Zeneb from that one season. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or what was that guy's name? Shake, the one that was with Deep D or Deeps. Mm -mm, that guy's trash too. But I don't know. It's not that I'm team Jimmy in this moment. I do appreciate that Jimmy, okay, side note, I'll say this and then I'll go. Southern goodbye. <laughs> Jimmy tells her before the wedding, I'm not gonna go down the aisle with you, which I would appreciate if I were her. I would way rather you tell me here one-on-one -on -one than in front of my whole friends and family. Like, I think that is kind of a sign of the fact that he at least cared about her, again, her reputation, her, her pride, the way he was trying to protect his friends. Like, I do think he has empathy for that. But if I was Jimmy, I would have been like, hell no too. I really would have. And I think he dodged a bullet. And Chelsea girl, like if you're watching this or if anybody who knows her, I'm not trying to, like I said, all I can go off is what I see. There could be a whole other edit to the show that makes her look like Saint and Jimmy look like the devil incarnate. I don't know, just going off what I see. And I think I've heard Chelsea say she is gonna get in therapy. So clearly she agrees with some of this to an extent. All right, I gotta get out of here. Like I said, check out the Risa Tisa video and I will catch you guys in the next one.